When students ask me, how do I know if I'm really a painter? I answer, if you have to paint every day, absolutely have to, in order to preserve your own sense of self or your own well-being, you're a painter. It's a compulsion. The three most important things about a painting or any art form are composition, composition, and composition. Behind me, you see my latest work entitled Isis Winter Morn. And in it, we see the focal point of the entire image, the Temple of Isis. But why do we see the Temple of Isis as the focal point of the entire painting? Well, composition is the reason we see it this way. And good composition demands subordination. All of the composition elements support and point to the Temple of Isis in one way or another. I've worked with composition, color, and contrast in order to draw the viewer's eye into the dominant field of the composition, Temple of Isis using subordination as a primary tool of composition. One component of this is the use of phi, or the golden ratio. What makes this number so interesting and so intriguing is that phi actually provides us with a wonderful example of that feeling of utter amazement. Well, that Albert Einstein values so much. In Albert Einstein's own words, he said, the number phi is a magical number. The number phi is a never-ending, never-repeating number of 1.618033988 dot 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 at infinitum. It's more often referred to as the golden section or the divine proportion as Leonardo da Vinci referred to it. It's a specific ratio of 1 to 1.618 or in layman's terms 1 to a little more than one and a half. But specifically and mysteriously nature has chosen 1 to 1.618. A few examples of this ratio would be the width to the height of an egg, 1 to 1.618. The width to the height of the hand, 1 to 1.618. The relationship between the upper and lower leg, 1 to 1.618. Or the width to the height of the face, 1 to 1.618. We find this ratio in nature, in birds, trees, animals, plants, fish, nuts, shells, seeds, insects, and flowers. Nature is replete with this ratio. So, I figure if it's good enough for nature, it's good enough for me. And I use this ratio in my paintings. I work out of a gray palette, G-R-E-Y versus G-R-A-Y. The distinction being that G-R-A-Y is a proportional mixture of black and white. G-R-E-Y is a proportional mixture of varying colors of color complements, such as green and red, violet and yellow, and blue and orange. In this specific instance, I'm working with predominantly green and its complementary color red in order to come closest to the color I determined in the study that I made at sunrise on the rim to approximate the bright angel shale. I'm mixing up a batch of grayish green in order to match the bright angel shale as I saw it on the rim of the Grand Canyon. So you see how this is turning into a G-R-E-Y greenish gray? When I compare it with, alongside this red here, I can see where I stand in terms of the temperature and the value. So what I'll do is I'll divide this, put some aside, and continue working, making this either warmer, or cooler, lighter, or darker. I'm going to start with
and again a little bit warmer with a little bit of Venetian red which is going to make it further further its grayness a little bit more red Now I've got a, a grayish greenish red and a grayish green, so I can compare those two. Now I want to make one more, a little bit on the cool side. I want to add a little bit of a little more blue and just a little bit more white because blue is so dark it's going to drive the value down lower. I want to keep the value the same, so I add a little white. Now by comparing these three the warm, the cool, and the middle greens. We have variation that we can work with up on the painting. We've got a grayish, reddish green, a grayish green, and a bluish green. We get some variation here now to work with. And I'm gonna make this just a little lighter and a little bluer to give it a little more contrast. There we go. Now we can compare them side by side. And there we go. The differences are subtle. They'll make a big difference when I get them up on the painting. Here's the warm, the middle, and the cool. I'm going to warm this up just a smidge even more. Now you see it's a reddish gray. It's no longer a greenish gray, see that? It's a reddish gray. So I pushed it too far. Pushed it too far, I need to cool it down a little bit. The color complement, which is a blue. Still a little bit on the reddish side. I wanna stay focused on bright angel shale, which is grayish green. What is this? It's violet. So I need to come back in with a with a smidge more blue to keep it on the greenish side. I got a little too warm. I launch into a little bit more blue. Cool it back down. There we go. There we go. Now it's on the blue side again. The bluish, the bluish green. Now look at that. It's come way cooler than my cool over here originally. And also it's pretty dark, so I'm gonna lighten it up. I've got, I'm way, way out of the warm that I originally started with, so I'm gonna add some more yellow to it. Yeah, there we go. Because I wanna get it back up on the yellowish greenish side not the bluish greenish but the yellowish greenish let's see how that compares that's 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 nice that's nice i'm gonna lighten it up just a, just a little bit and i may need to modulate it just a little more yellow so i have three distinct different temperature ranges here warm middle and cool there we go I'm happy with that. We got a warm, a middle, and a cool grayish green. Now I have something to work with on, on the canvas. For me, it is essential to get out in nature and capture the colors as I see them at the time with the available light. That way, when I get back to the studio, my memory gets jogged so I can remember and see the colors as they were.
All right, one of the intense problem, problems of paint allocation is getting the right color mixed up quickly and getting an impression of it put, an impression of it put down on the canvas so that we can uh, <clears throat> achieve the primary goal here, which is a color study. <clears throat> By using the grayscale of complementary colors, I can, with a palette of only eight colors, mimic the millions of colors found in nature. So I'm going to try to get this bright angel shale all the way down to the bottom here, pretty soon here. In this, you'll see how I'm gradually, gradually eliminating the light. It's a process of eliminating the light and selectively ab absorbing and reflecting various wavelengths. That's the whole process in a nutshell. The human eye can see about 17,000 shades of value and about 34,000 gradations of color. Contrast is the difference between light and dark, and the human eye can discern very small differences between contrast or value. When you're out in nature, your eye can differentiate very small differences in the shadows. In a painting, I have to help out the eye by making slight adjustments to the pigments to add contrast to the shadows. We're looking at about a 15% difference in the contrast where I'm painting this. By using these three techniques of composition, color, and contrast, I guide the viewer's eye to the dominant or central theme of the composition, giving the perspective of being on the rim of the Grand Canyon, viewing the grandeur of the Temple of Isis. Bow, bow, bow.